Hello, I'm the Infinity Theorist, Quake Spinoff Enthusiast, and I did it. I did it for you guys, I did it for the content, I did it for the easter eggs, I did it for the small little references, I did it for the experience again. Well, what did I do? Rewatch all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And why is that a bad thing? Because I had to put myself through the pain of losing it again after the series finale. Just has had such an impact on my life, and that is clearly visible through the content on this channel. So, I'm sorry to say... And this will be the last Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video on my channel. For this year, at least. Hi, do you think I'll just do this last A.O.S. video and just forget about the series altogether? No, that'd be like Marvel, like if it's a quick spinoff. Mm, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, we can't just forget about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Instead, my plan for the rest of 2020 is to not make another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video. This might be hard, but I think we can do it. After all, we do still have The Mandalorian. The last videos of the year that are not Hard Wars Mystery playthroughs will be about The Mandalorian, maybe some Harry Potter, some other stuff, and maybe uh, just a little project that I'm starting. Anyway, let's get into the last Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video of the year and make it last. Alright, so spoiler warning for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the rest of the MCU as a whole. And I am aware that the intro should be right here, but I wanted the other part for dramatic effect. But, you know, in order to honor Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 9, I will put the intro here again. Oh, wait, before that happens, I need to give credit to the channels What the Geek and Heavy Spoilers as a few of these things I actually learned from their videos. Links to their channels in the description. Hope you enjoyed that royalty fee music. Uh, it sounded like Marvel music. Good enough. It was supposed to be a Marvel Space 3 style intro. It took a long time. Without further ado, let's get into the first thing, which is from Season 7, Episode 1. And it's also a collection of multiple things. All things LMB Colson said when he first booted it up. The first of these things is Colson saying he looked like Patrick Kutik, also known as Sarge. Well, this is true. Sarge did have Colson's face for most of Season 6. The second thing is just reference to when May died for a little bit in Season 6. Uh, the third thing is Coulson remembering his ship to Tahiti in Season 5. The fourth thing is Coulson yelling about Fitz's Season 5 death. The fifth thing is Coulson's mentioning of the lighthouse. The sixth and seventh things are a callback to Ghost Rider coming back and Coulson's deal with him. The thing that cost him his life. Again. He also died from Ghost Rider's zeal like two times, so yeah. Moving on, the next thing is from the first two episodes, and it is Ernest Koenig's nickname, Gemini, a zodiac sign that means twins. I find this interesting because the agent Koenigs from the future, or present, or uh, past? I don't know, I'll just say agent Koenigs from the early 21st century all look alike, kind of like identical twins, even though they're way, there's way more than two of them. From Season 7, Episode 3, we have the early developments of the EMP and the Communication Watch. We have come full circle, or I guess reverse full circle. Why is time travel so hard to understand? Anyway, uh, you get it. The EMP was a major part of the original timeline, and if you have seen my Season 1 video, link in the card, you know what the significance of the Communication Watch is. Next up, from the same episode, Daisy and Seuss's First time meeting each other. It's about the operation she is, quote, clear to talk about. I found them, a, lo a lot of them to be references in the, to the TV show Agent Carter. Yeah. That's it for this one. I haven't really seen Agent Carter in so long. I forgot what some of it was about. Don't worry, I'm rewatching it. Anyway, the next one is from the same episode and it was supposed to be just a funny quote. Daisy tells Simmons that Coulson is... Alarmingly strong, and Simmons says that she keeps forgetting. I believe this to have been a reference to the Diana memory implant she had. It suppressed her memory, making her forget things, and this is even supported by the fact she only goes, only forgets when Enoch's not around. Enoch's not around in this episode. 
Uh, in season 7, episode 4, Daniel Sousa gets on Zephyr 1 for the first time. There, he meets the newly superpowered Melinda May. After he shook her hand, May starts to get confused, and Sousa says the words, I know how she feels. This is a slight hint to a, the, a reveal that would come later in the episode. That May only feels other people's emotions. Obviously, Sousa knows how she feels because she is feeling his emotions. For the next one, we head to the 1970s. At the bar in episode 5 of the season, better known as A Trout in the Milk, some of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents from that time period are drinking Mindiri English Ale, the same ale that has appeared on the show for pretty much the whole run. Though it is most famous in the AOS fandom for being one of the disguises that Enoch puts on the truck to try to keep people from finding out most of the main where most of the main characters were sent to the future. It is also the same ale that Bobby and Hunter drink in the season three episode Parting Shot, which some fans also call the Spies Goodbye. The next thing is also from A Trout in the Milk. It is the names of the Project Insight threat list. The names that stood out to me were Bruce Banner, Victoria Hand, and someone with the last name Amador, Thomas Hall, and David Robinson. These names stood out because Bruce Banner, well, is the Hulk. Victoria Hand is one of the hub agents in Season 1. Amador is the last name of the girl with the kill switch in her eye. Thomas Hall has the same name as Franklin Hall, so I think they might be related. And the guy who messed with... He's also the guy who makes his Gravitonium in season one. And David Robinson, or actually Thomas Hall is the one who makes with Gravitonium. And David Robinson is now retired bas- is a now retired basketball players player. I get most of these names except Robinson. Why would a basketball player be a threat to the Chronicoms? He's a basketball player. I don't know. Anyway, the next two things are also from A Trout in the Milk. First is Colson's alias. Patrick Kutik. That is a reference to Sarge from season six. His real name was Patch Kutik, or Sarge's real name was Patch Kutik. The next part of this is a reference to season five, when Colson says he is from processing. This is a reference to the sewers and the lighthouse the shield team claimed to have worked in the future. Worked in in the future. The next one is from the Totally Excellent Adventures of Mac and the D, and yes, that I know that name is extremely fun to say. Roxy Glass's name is a reference to Ron Glass, an actor from season one who passed away in 2016. This is pretty easy to spot because on her Deke Squad Shield uniform, the words R Glass are visible, which are the same initials as the actor who played one of Coulson's Sticky Eddie Doctors. The next one is from episode eight of the season, and it is a flashback. In one of Yo-Yo's flashbacks while fighting Mei, she and her cousin are stealing a cross ne- necklace. I am pretty sure this is the same Faith necklace from Season 3 that determined the Fallen Agent at the end of the season. Yes, I'm talking about Lincoln Campbell. For the next one, you are going to have to think of the first fake word that comes to your, into your head. Did you say... Flobotnam. Yeah, this isn't the first time. Good. Because it isn't actually a fake word. It is defined by Wiktionary as a fictional material used by authors to develop a plot requiring a material with properties not possessed by any real material. And I just realized how many of the word material is in that definition. Anyway, so essentially time travel is a phlebotonym. I love that word. So is a time loop. There are a lot of phlebotonyms in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and this is a great way for them to be to reference them. Even the context in which the word Flobotnam. Yeah, this isn't the first time is used is a good way to explain it. Think of a fake word and just say it out loud. Anything. Flobotnam being considered a fake word explains what it means, since what the word describes is something not real. The next two things are pretty similar, but come from different episodes. The first is from the end of... As I have when Cora demonstrates her powers to Nathaniel, she does a destructive version of Daisy demonstrating her powers to Giant. Back in the good old days of season two, 
Daisy shows Jiang her powers making music with wine glasses, then accidentally breaks them. In season seven, episode nine, Cora does this, but intentionally breaks the glass. Then, one episode later, Daisy does the music thing to demonstrate her powers to her mother again. Vibrations. Where did you learn that? From you. That afterlife. In 30 years. Pretty fun reference to the good old days that I wasn't there for. I mean, yeah, I was there in the sense that I was like, I was existing in 2014 and 2015. Hadn't watched it show yet, and I regret it. Next is the Quinchet's ID number in A Brand New Day. Yo-Yo says that they are S.H.I.E.L.D. 616. This is a reference to Earth 616, or Earth Prime from the comics. It is the main universe in which most of the comics take place. It is also a, re a reference to S.H.I.E.L.D. 616 from Seasons 1 and 2. That's right, the bus was S.H.I.E.L.D. 616. Man, I miss the bus, and it would be a good thing to reintroduce it in a quick spinoff. Mm -hmm. listen, listen to that. Oh, and just because this is the last AOS video of the year doesn't mean I'm going to stop making these terrible Quake spin-off jokes, okay? Uh, the next thing is from part one of the series finale. It is about the weapon Mac and Susie used to fight the Clonicons. It is the same weapon that Ward uses to take out some people in season one. The next thing is also from The End is at Hand. When Simmons loses her memory, Deke says that she starts to say something about cuttlefish and chromatophores. That has a reference to season 6 when she turned into a 7 year old in the Conicom's mind prison and said that when she grew up, she wanted to study cuttlefish and their chromatophores. Now, time for the pain. This next one is from the series finale. The same series finale that when I watch always gives me a what now kind of feeling and i've only seen it two times and i write focus the last thing on today's video and indeed the last thing on the things you may have missed in Agent of shield series is about max present to colson the code to the safe is 136 which is not so much a reference to anything in multiverse or see what it is there but instead a reference to the number of total episodes in agents of shield there are 136 episodes in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Fun fact about those 136 episodes, if you were about to binge all of them in one sitting without ads or commercials, it would take you five days and two hours, or at least according to the binge clock. I haven't really done the math because I didn't want to, but still. All right, so I don't think I will do an outro today because of the significance of this video. So you know what to do. Though I will tell you to subscribe so you can see more videos like this. Alright. Goodbye.